Have you ever worked on a sound effect or a piece of music and you're working in your studio and it sounds amazing, you're super excited and happy with it, and then you leave your studio, you take it out, you plug in your headphones, you listen to it on your phone, and suddenly your track sounds really thin and bland or your sound effect sounds really like it's missing a lot of body and weight to the sound. And it's not the same sound that you had when you created it in your studio. Hi everyone, David here from davidmayaudio.com. And in this video, I wanna share with you the one piece of software that actually made me a better sound designer and composer. All right, so if that story actually sounded familiar and you've actually done this before where you worked on a project, you take it out, you listen to it on your headphones, on your earphones, wherever, you leave your studio, you listen to it on your phone maybe, and then suddenly it just doesn't sound the same. I actually ran into that exact same problem a couple of years ago when I was actually working for somebody and I was delivering uh, music for them for a game. And um, as I was working, every time I switched between different uh, like listening environments, so I was in my studio and then I would go and listen to it on my phone or I would go listen to it somewhere else in the car and it just didn't sound the same. And there was like, it, it just was not as good. And I couldn't figure out why that is. So I did a lot of research into it. And a lot of people were saying, well, you just got to get to know your speakers. You just have to know your, your room environment. You have to do a lot of sound isolation in your room and you have to do a lot of treatment so that you don't get these resonant frequencies and that'll help you mix better. And while all those things are good and true, um, there are still some other things that you can do to help you uh, make better mixing decisions and better design decisions whenever you're doing music or sound design. So eventually uh, I did some research and I found out about Room EQ. So what exactly is this? So Room EQ is basically an EQ that you put uh, at the end of your master bus, at your end of your uh, mix bus, uh, so that it corrects the inaccuracies in your room or the frequencies that are in your room. So let's back up a little bit and talk about that. So there's a few things to take into consideration when we're talking about frequencies and the sound that we're actually hearing when we're in our studio. So one, there's two things that affect it. So one is your uh, studio speakers. So every piece of hardware will sound different. They're just by the way they're built and by the way they're made and the quality of sound that uh, comes from them is they're all gonna be different. Some of them emphasize a bit of the low end, maybe the bass. Some of them maybe emphasize a bit of the high end. Maybe they're a bit brighter, but some of them maybe scoop out some mids. Um, so based on the different hardware and how they're made, they will have different frequency, different frequency responses. So they will not sound the same. So that is one thing. The next thing is that every room that you're going to be in is going to sound different. So let's say you have your studio speakers in your room at home and they sound great there. Well, then if you take those exact same speakers, your exact same setup, and you put it in a different room, a bigger room, let's say, they're not going to sound the same. They're going to suddenly sound different. They might sound um, a bit more clear. You might have less bass if it's in a, a bigger room. If you put it in a smaller room, in a boxy room, then suddenly you might have something like a peak at around 100 hertz, uh, which is very common. So depending on the room you're in, the acoustics of that room will greatly affect how you perceive your sound in uh, in your space where you're mixing and working. All right, so what Room EQ does now is it actually corrects those differences in frequencies so that they are not uh, perceived, so that they are not uh, you're not colored by them. Okay, so why don't we actually look at my computer and I want to show you guys exactly what I use, what this piece of software is. All right, so here we are in Nuendo, and the piece of software that I use as my room EQ here is Sonarworks. So this is Reference 4. I think now they have a new version called Sound ID, which is just a, an upgraded version from the Reference 4, but basically the same thing, just a few added features. Um, but you should be able to get the concept uh, just from this, hopefully, um, if I can explain it properly. All right, here we go. So um, what is it exactly? So what it is, is like I said, it's an EQ that you put at the end of your mix bus to change the frequencies in the sound, okay? So if we look here, this, this is the correction that, that Sonarworks is doing because I did a test in my room and this is the sound, um, the EQ curve that it gave me. So how does this work? Let's start from the beginning here. When you purchase this, what they give you is a microphone so that you can um, place around your room uh, so that it, it takes the basically the acoustics of the room and, and figures out the frequency response of your room. So basically it tries to emulate a flat curve because ideally if you can get a flat EQ curve, it should translate well across different uh, listening environments and different speakers. Okay, that's that's the theory behind it. Okay, so that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get just get a flat EQ response. Obviously not, and no one has ever had a flat EQ frequency response anywhere. There's always some sort of minor uh, corrections that you need to make. Okay, and as you can see here, when I was doing my test, so basically you get the microphone, you start up the software, they do some sound tests, and there's a whole bunch of sound and frequency sweeps that, that, that they play, and then you go to different positions in your room. And then after you're done, they give you this curve. And now this is the sound of my room. So here it is. And so what is it exactly? So what is this curve? This is an EQ curve of my studio before I used Sonarworks Reference 4. So this is what I was hearing in my studio. So in my studio, and by the way, these are, are split into left and right. So you can see like the dark blue is the left channel and the light blue is the right channel. So this is what I would hear, okay? So um, 
when I would be standing in my listening spot, so right in front of my computer between my two speakers, this is what I would hear. I would hear a huge, massive uh, boost at around whatever this is, or like 90, something like that. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I'd have this massive boost of nine uh, plus nine dB. Like that's huge. Okay. So that's absolutely gross. Like when you're, when you're writing music or you're doing sound design and, and you hear this massive boost, you're naturally going to want to cut it out or like not include sounds uh, or layers that have this massive boost because it's just going to overpower the rest of your sound effect. Okay. And that's what I was doing uh, when I would be doing music or doing sound design. And I would, um, I would always avoid anything that had a lot of bass because to my ears, it sounded really loud, but in reality, it probably wasn't. And that's what it, that's what would happen whenever I would translate that into a different listening environments. Like if I would go into, let's say, uh, just put on my headphones, suddenly it wouldn't sound like this anymore. And it sounded like there's missing a lot of bass. Well, that's because I didn't put any bass because to me in my ears, it sounded like there was a lot of bass, right? So this is one area here. But I mean, you can check every everywhere else. As you can see here, I also had a dip around here, 150, 200. Another dip here around 500. Another dip here around, you know, 2,000, 3,000. And then again, a huge air, airy boost here uh, in the highs at around whatever this is, like five, six, seven K, okay? So this to me is what I was he hearing before I used Sonarworks, okay? And then as soon as I put Sonarworks on, and then uh, like here you can see the correction that I was doing. So it's basically just the opposite. So if I could put on the before and after, it's basically, the, basically doing the opposite curve to correct what it's doing. And then what you can see here, the simulated after. Now, what Sonarworks is actually doing is this kind of room EQ. And now this is what I'm hearing through my speakers, okay? So it sounds a lot more flat, a lot flatter frequency response so that whenever I am listening in my studio or if I go somewhere else to listen to it, I still get a, a, a nice, clear uh, sound anywhere I go. Okay, so let's actually uh, switch over. I'm going to show you guys some examples so you know exactly what it looks like and sounds like in practice. All right, so let me show you the process of what I'm doing here so you guys can actually understand what's happening. Okay, so I just took white noise, uh, and this is white noise. So if you look at the frequency response here of this white noise, it should be flat. And it's pretty much flat all the way up to 10K, and then it kind of dips down. That's fine. At least at least up to 10K, it's flat, okay? So this is the frequency response here. Now what I did is, uh, within Nuendo, I took the same, uh, same signal, same white noise, except I, I applied my... Uh, correction to it. Okay. And now this is it right here. And now if I open up my sonar works again, you should see that these two should be pretty darn similar. So uh, you should see here, I have a little boost at whatever this is 60, let's say, and here I have a boost at around this 60. What is this around 50, 60. Okay. And then I have a dip at around 90. And if you look here, I have a dip around 93, right? So it's like, it's basically following the exact same curve here. Uh, as it is here. Now, obviously here, it's a bit more detailed because um, the range is from zero dB to 18. Here you have like whatever, zero to 120. So that's why it looks a little bit less, but this is pretty much following the exact curve, okay? So what I did is I did an, I'm, I'm gonna do an EQ match. So I'm gonna grab this frequency spectrum and EQ match it. So I'm just gonna learn it and I've already done that. And now you can see like, this is the EQ of this sound, okay? And now if I go into other sounds, so this is, a sound that I created. This is a riser. So let's just hear it on its own. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this EQ to the sound. So you're going to hear it how I would hear it without my, uh, without sonar work. So let's hear it on its own. Uh, okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare. And now you're gonna hear it the way I would hear it in my studio, okay? So let's hear it. So without Sonar Works, this is what it sounded like to me in my studio, right? Super thin, super squeezed. Uh, let's, let's listen between the two again. Right, so they sound completely different. Like this original audio sounds like it has a full body, full uh, bass end to it, and this top one it really doesn't. Right, it's really bright nasally, and it just doesn't sound good. Right, so this is the difference that, that Sonar Works makes to your sound. So it applies this EQ so that when I'm playing it in in my studio, I don't hear this sound and try to make it sound good, right? I don't hear this and then I try to add some bass because it's missing bass. Like, no, it's actually, this is what it actually s sounds like if I was going to take it out to different listening environments. 
Okay, so let's do a few other examples here so you can really understand what the heck this is going, what, what, what exactly is happening. So again, this is the original audio. And this is what it sounded like to me when I uh, didn't have Sonarworks. And just so you know, there is some slight variation, as you can see here, in integrated loudness. So uh, this one is like negative 12 LUFS, and here is like negative uh, 10.6. So you have you know 1.5 difference. But even with that, hopefully you can hear the frequency differences between the two sounds. Like they're not at all different. And by the way, you're going to need a decent set of speakers or headphones to listen to this because this is a really bassy sound. Right? It just doesn't sound like the same sound, and yet it is the same sound. So. Again, huge difference. So this is the original audio, and this is what it would sound like without Sonarworks. This is how I would hear it in my studio. Right, super bright, nasally. There's like ba barely any bass to it, right? So probably not a sound that I would have designed, not a sound that I would have kept. But with Sonarworks, it sounds like this. Like to me, that sounds really cool because you have a lot of bass, which is what I was going for with this type of sound. All right, let's try another one here just so you guys have an idea again. Okay, so this is the original sound. than without Sonarworks. Like hopefully you can hear that there's so much bass and body missing to the sound. It just, it's not at all the same sound, right? So hopefully this kind of makes my point and shows my point that I'm trying to make here um, That's of what Sonarworks is doing, at least for me here in my studio. Now, for you in your studio or wherever you're listening, maybe, you know, you have this, um, Original EQ here doesn't actually sound that great. Maybe this this uh, EQ without Sonarworks sounds great. You know, D again, it depends on the room you're mixing in because maybe your speakers for you actually accentuates the the low end. So this one sounds better, and this sounds this one may sound like well, there's way too much bass or something, right? So it it can it completely de depends on on your room and your acoustics and stuff. But for me, this sounds like super just nice full body sound, and this one is super thin. So just something to keep in mind there. All right, so now what I wanted to do is actually show you what is Sonarworks and basically how I use it, okay? So this is Sonarworks Reference 4. This is the studio and headphones uh, version. So you can see here I have my uh, ca headphone calibrations done and I also have my uh, monitor. So I use the Sennheiser 280 Pro and this is the average um, curve for, I, I don't know how many Sennheisers they recorded and simulated the curves for, but this is the average of however many they took and, and this is the average curve for them. So if you can look here, uh, you can see you have different options of what you can choose for. So the target here, the red line, this is what you this is what it's aiming to do. So it's aiming to just for a flat f frequency response, okay? And this is the resulted uh, frequency response that I'm hearing through my uh, headphones if I was going to wear them right now. Okay, so it'd be like super slight boost. And as you can see, not very much. It looks pretty darn flat. But before, if we look at the before, this is actually what it looked like before, right? So like completely not at all. This is again, the average by, you know, I, th I think they say by plus one to three dB um, is, is their kind of target range. So, but plus one or three dB, this is what it looked like before. And now I'm able to get something more like uh, this, right? More like a flat frequency curve. Okay, so a big difference. Uh, again, this one is not as bad in terms of EQ. Like you can see, the EQ is pretty darn close. To, like it's less than 60B. I think only up here is up to 60B. 60B is usually like you want to start fixing something here when you're getting that high. And as you can see here in my other ones, so for my actual studio monitors, so I'm using the M Audio BX8 in my studio. You can see that before, this is the kind of frequency response I had, like a huge boost at 100 uh, dB, right? Like over 60 dB, what is this, like 9 dB? Like that's a lot. So I would like cut this out like crazy, which is why like I would have zero bass in my sound, zero like low end, right? So yeah, that this is really <laughs> crazy, okay? And then if you look at the correction, actually here, we'll do uh, after. So after the correction, this is the kind of response that I get now. Everything's within one to two dB, and it's a pretty darn flat curve from about 100 hertz onwards, which is really great because then I, now I know exactly how to mix uh, in terms of like how to layer sounds and frequencies together, okay? Um, so a few things here. Yeah, you have your two options, your speakers, studio. Uh, you can see your curves based on your targets, whatever. Uh, you can also do a bass boost if you wanted to. I'd never use this, but you could if you wanted to. So let's like, say you wanted more bass or less bass, you can add some. Uh, like, let's say you just prefer to hear sounds with more bass. So I'll just add some bass here, right? 
And then here you have some predefined curves, and which again, I don't really use because I just try to keep mine as flat as possible so that it can uh, be well represented ac across different headphones, listening environments, etc. All right, um, after that, you have a safe headroom. This is just so that you don't peek because it's changing the EQ. It's gonna change the volume and you just wanna make sure you're not peeking or clipping. So that's why it brings down the volume here. And then of course you can go between mono and stereo. Okay, and then you also have a wet dry. All right, so where do I actually use this? So when I'm working within Nuendo, uh, what's great about this is they uh, Nuendo and Cubase have a control room. And the control room is basically, it's like your listening environment. Okay, so whatever you put on this, um, inserts, uh, the inserts on this insert bus, um, it won't actually go out into the stereo out. It's just what you're going to hear out of your speakers, but not what's going to be exported once you export the track. Okay, so that's why I put this here, because whatever I put here, I'm going to hear, but it's not going to actually affect the track once I export it. So this is where I put the stuff. So, so I put Sonarworks on here so that whenever I'm playing something, I hear the sound here, but it's not actually going to the output bus. The output bus is only going to hear whatever's in my project here. Okay, so that's how I use it. The other place I put it, of course, is just on my desktop. So I have it across all my computers so that I, whatever audio I listen to at any time, any, and anywhere, like on YouTube or whatever, uh, if I'm watching a movie, anything I'm listening to on my computer, Sonarworks is always actively monitoring the sound. So if I look here, this is the one that's across my entire computer, and uh, this is always getting applied to the sound. All right, so that is Sonarworks. That is the Room EQ that I choose and that I use in my work. And this is not a sponsored video or anything. I just really want to share it with you guys because like I said at the beginning, this is actually one of the software that made me a better sound designer and composer because it actually improved my listening so that I can make better decisions whenever I'm creating sound effects, music, whatever it is that I'm working on in my studio. Okay, so should you get Sonarworks? Uh, my quick answer is yes, <laughs> but also it depends. So they have two different versions. One, like I said, is the studio version where it's for your speakers and your headphones. And then the other one is just headphones. So if you're just starting out and you're just a beginner, um, what I would recommend is that you just do the headphones first. The reason for that is just you're gonna save yourself money uh, in terms of budget, especially if you don't have uh, like professional studio monitors. There's no point of getting the studio version for any other computer uh, monitors that you might have. So start with just the headphones if that's what you have and what you're using. And then eventually, if you ever upgrade to studio monitors or larger studio monitors, then yeah, upgrade to get the full reference uh, like suite. So the for the studio and the monitors or, or the headphones, sorry. So you get both of those uh, as one product. And I should also mention before you even consider getting like reference for uh, studio, you should definitely invest into some room treatment, sound treatment for your room. So in my room, I have like six, I have six bass boards here, like six boards, not bass boards, but sound boards that are made to absorb sound, especially, especially like low frequency sounds. Uh, just because I have a bigger room and my, my monitors are pretty close to the wall. So I know I have a lot of bass uh, around here. So I, I put those around my studio here, around my desk. But um, yeah, that's the first thing I would, I would kind of put money towards if you're going the uh, studio monitor route. Okay, so if you're gonna get studio monitors, start by making your sound a bit more soundproof. Once you have it a bit more soundproof, then you'll still need a bit of room correction, room EQ, and that's when you should maybe look into getting something like Sonarworks just to make it as flat as possible. All right, so I think that's basically it for this video. Hopefully I didn't embarrass myself too much with this technical information, but um, hopefully you guys get the idea of what Sonarworks can do and how it works and how it can actually make you a better sound designer and composer. And um, I know like some people say like this is kind of a a controversial topic, a controversial thing that whether you should even use room EQ or not, or whether you should just use your ears and get better at listening. But to me, I just want to hear sounds the, the, the way that they should uh, that the, the way that it'll be heard translated across different listening environments. So if I can hear it as flat as possible, that's what I want to hear. And it's just made a huge difference in my life. It's improved the quality of my sound pretty much instantly. Like actually, as soon as I installed it, uh, the next like track of music that I created, the next sound effects that I created were instantly better. So it really is that big of a difference. So um, anyways, that's it for now. I really encourage you guys to get it if, you, um, if this is something that would help you. And I think that's it for now. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Also check the description. I have a little sound pack for you guys for free. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.